Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On. When it's wet and windy outside, FPV flying is not anywhere near as much fun. Fortunately, micro FPV quadcopters are rising in popularity, and of course they allow us to keep flying indoors. Over the last few months, I've been reviewing brushed micro racing quadcopters, and you've been commenting to ask me to review a brushless one. Well, I've just been sent one for review. This is the King Kong Q90, which came from Gearbest. It costs about £110, which is around $140. It doesn't include a receiver, so you need to add your own, and I'll show you how to do that in this video. We're also going to look at the configuration of the flight controller, and of course, we'll be flight testing it as well. It's gonna be in two parts, so be sure to press that subscribe button now. Also, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the review. Right, let's get on with unboxing it. So here we have the King Kong Q90. This one came from Gearbest and it's shipped via DHL. It only actually took less than a week to arrive, which is nice not having to wait 20 days. So let's open it up. And so we've got a cardboard box with the specification on the front of it there. The specification we'll go through later when we actually open up and look at the quad in detail. So let's get the box opened and see what this thing looks like. It is so cute. It's tiny. These motors are just a work of art. We'll have a look at that in detail in a second. We'll just finish off by looking at what else is in the box. So this is quite nice, bit of quality control. Now they're always a little bit suspect, these quality control sheets. We don't know to what extent they've actually checked. We've got a bag here with an additional elastic band. Um, that's for holding the battery on underneath. It's nice to get a spare, and it's also nice that they're not these tiny ones that fly off and you never find them. We've got a cable there as well, which looks like it's for connecting up the S bus into the receiver. I've got the plug and play version here, which doesn't come with a receiver. So this is probably for connecting your receiver to the S bus port on the flight controller. We've got a battery and it's a 300 milliamp two cell battery. Not a lot of weight in that. Obviously not a very big battery either in terms of capacity. So it'd be nice to try a slightly bigger battery. I actually have a two cell nanotech here, which is an 850 milliamp, probably gonna be too heavy, but we might give that a try later just to see. Got a little toolkit, a uh, prop removal tool. That's always good to see on these tiny little motors and a screwdriver as well. And finally, a set of props. Now it's a shame actually, there's only one set of props here, no spares. Um, and they are very, very small, probably very brittle as well. So if you are ordering this quad, I would highly recommend ordering some spare props as well. Now, as I said initially, this thing is really cute. And I know I say that about all of these small quadcopters, but it's the fact that this is brushless and actually it's a really compact little design. Now it is what kind of, it's got a feel of one of those motorhomes you see where they're so full, the people are going on holiday and they've stacked suitcases on the roof as high as they can go. It's got that kind of feel to it, this. Um, the frame is certainly, full inside there and I can see for that reason why they've mounted the flight controller on top which isn't ideal really but there's nowhere else to put it I suppose. Um, you've also got to consider that your receiver has to go in here as well somewhere. Now it's very unlikely that you're going to get it in here unless you get one of those tiny little micro ones. The only other option really is on top of the flight controller or not really ideal would be under here, which of course the battery is then going to fit on top of as well which isn't ideal in terms of heat. Specification, so we've got an SP Racing F3 flight controller here. It's one of the six DOF versions. This flight controller is quite nice, actually. We've got lots of ports on here, and I read that you can even hook up a GPS module to this flight controller. So I think really they've gone a bit overboard with the flight controller here. Nobody's really gonna be sticking a GPS module uh, or a telemetry module onto a quad of this size. Um, so really, a, a, perhaps a three or four in one flight controller combined with speed controllers would have been more appropriate. There is actually another model called the Q90 GT, which replaces this one, I believe, and it's got a, a slightly more compact arrangement here. We've got a USB port here on the top. So this is for programming it. Obviously, it comes with clean flight. You might want to flash it with beta flight. Uh, and then on the other side, we've got our various UART ports, serial bus ports. Um, as well. We've got 1103 78kV brushless motors and they are just tiny. Absolutely incredible bit of engineering. Uh, they're branded King Kong so they are their own brand. 
The actual pin on there as well is not threaded. Um, these props are just gonna push on. So ensure that if you are buying your spare props, you get the correct size. These look to me about a millimeter. Speed controllers, uh, we've got luckily BL Heli compatible, um, up to six amps continuous, and they're sat underneath the arms. They're not protected here at all though. That might be an issue if you're landing um, or scraping across ground. Also the wires on the edge of the motors here are quite exposed and I would be a little bit worried about those scraping and wearing over time. But there's nothing to stop you wrapping a bit of uh, insulation tape around these speed controllers and the, possibly the bottoms of the wires here, just to give them some added protection. On the rear here, we've got the power connection and interestingly, it's using the balance port. Now that's quite an odd design decision. The battery actually comes with a uh, two pin connector there, as you can see. Obviously it also has a balance port lead and that's what the quad is using for power. Unusual, I've not seen that before. Uh, not an issue, I guess, but it's just different, that's all. The camera on the front is a 600 TVL, according to the specification, although according to the website listing, it's an 800 TVL. Hard to tell the difference specifically unless you really, really go into detail there. Unfortunately, however, one observation around the camera is that there is no tilt mechanism on there. It looks like it has about three degrees from horizontal, which is virtually nothing. But with these small micro quadcopters, rarely do you need any more tilt than that because you're not flying flat out as you would with a full size or larger class quadcopter. So it should not be so much of an issue. Connected to that is a 5.8 gig, 25 milliwatt VTX. Uh, it's only a 16 channel. Most of them are uh, 20 or 32 or 40 these days, but this is only a 16 channel. The frame itself is carbon fiber. It looks like it's two mil, two and a half mil carbon fiber. And it really is a solid feeling little quadcopter. The specification says 54 grams. Let's quickly put that to the test. Um, let's see how accurate that rating is. So 53.8, it doesn't get much closer than that. It's quite unusual that a specification for weight is accurate. It's nice to see that this one is. So just undoing the four screws on the top of the cover here and lifting that up, which releases the camera PCB. And under here now we can see the full VTX and there is the button for switching channel. So it's in a bit of an awkward position. You can't actually really reach that button uh, once the cover is in place. So make sure you set that as you need to. You might be able to put a screwdriver in from the side actually to switch the button, but it's not ideal. So yeah, it's the full size VTX there. That's taken up the majority of the room inside here actually. So maybe you could relocate that VTX to somewhere else and then install the receiver actually inside here, one of the micro FR Sky or otherwise receivers. So let's see how it looks with the props fitted. Now these props are tiny as are the motors. So this is all quite a fiddly process. Now these props do look tiny in relation to the overall size of the frame of this quadcopter. Um, the props are also very close to the frame here. So if you look here, you actually couldn't get larger props on here if you tried. Um, they're very, very close to the carbon fiber. So it's time to get a receiver installed into our little King Kong Q90. Now it is a lightweight quadcopter this. What we don't want to do is increase that weight substantially by using a receiver such as the X4R. This little AC800 is even lighter and obviously it's much smaller as well. So we have much more chance of getting this to fit inside the frame itself. Links to this receiver are in the video description if you'd like to buy one of these. The range, of course, is not as good as the X4R, but we're not going to be flying this micro quadcopter very far away from us anyway. So with the intention of installing this receiver inside the quadcopter, I need to just allow enough cable to reach this front UART connector on the flight controller. I'm going to be using SBUS with this little receiver. Now the flight controller came with this cable here. Uh, that's going to plug into the front and then the other side of that is going to connect into this little receiver. We actually don't need the green connector on this plug and so I'm actually going to snip that off. There we go. And now I'm going to basically attach the cables. I'm going to prepare three small bits of heat shrink so I can cover the, the join that I make, the solder join. Okay and just also strip the cables 
on here. So like I've got some of the wire exposed. There we go. So I've now got wire exposed on this side and I've got wires exposed on the receiver plug here as well. What I now need to do is solder them all together. And of course the final step is just to shrink your heat shrink. So just apply gently a bit of heat to it and it'll start to compress. So that's our receiver now attached to the flight controller, ready to be installed inside. What I'd recommend you do just before you go any further is actually just to power on the quadcopter, make sure you don't have any props attached, and just make sure you've got power to your receiver, which we have. So next is the installation of the receiver inside. And it is preferable to put the receiver inside. There's not a lot of room in there but we're gonna try our best to squeeze it in. So I'm gonna undo the four screws which are holding the top part of the frame onto the body. Okay, and we can now get access inside. So at this point you can see there's not a lot of room in here. I've actually had the lid off before here as well to add a little bit of insulation tape around the camera here just to reduce some vibration because it looked like the camera was a little bit loose so that tiny bit of tape just helps to keep it in place. So we've got our VTX which is taking up most of the room in there. So what I'm going to do is thread the antenna through the hole in the bottom of the frame there and the reason for that is to keep it away from the props. So with that receiver tucked in there I think that will probably work actually. Let's see if we can close this up. Yep and that's not putting it under too much strain either so you can just see the receiver in there and that fits actually quite nice. It's very very packed in there. It's really not ideal but there's not a lot of choice. Okay, be careful not to overdo the, the screws as well because I believe the standoffs are actually plastic. So you don't want to strip the thread. So there we go, we've managed to actually squeeze that receiver in there and get it installed quite neatly actually. The antenna for the receiver is just coming out of the underside there so it's nice and far away from the props and should give us a nice signal. So the first thing you need to do is turn on your transmitter. I've already set up the model name for this one, so I'm now going to go to the uh, bind options. Make sure you set it to D8 if you're using the same receiver as I am. Uh, you don't want it set to D16. So set it to D8. Get ready on the bind option and now power up the quadcopter. Now you may not be able to see it, but on the receiver there is a tiny little red light. Now after leaving the receiver powered up for just about five seconds, that little red light will start flashing, at which point press your bind button on the transmitter and then the light on the receiver will go solid red. At which point you can turn off the bind on the transmitter and you've successfully bound to that receiver. And then you need to turn everything off and on again, obviously, to complete the binding process. So the first thing to do, obviously, is to plug in our USB cable into our PC that we're going to be running Clean Flight and Beta Flight on. Also, because we're going to need the receiver powered up, plug in the battery for the quadcopter as well. It's again worth saying that you must not have the props attached. And it's at this point that I made a rather interesting discovery. The website documentation, even the box says that it's running CleanFlight. So I fired up CleanFlight, connected, and went to version to see which version of CleanFlight it's actually shipped with. And interestingly, it's running BetaFlight. So perhaps the manufacturers have updated their firmware and they now ship it with BetaFlight instead, which is much better anyway for us all. So we're going to switch to beta flight, connect, and the first thing we're going to do is calibrate the accelerometer. So make sure the quadcopter is on a flat surface and then click that button. That's all good. Port. So our UART2 is powering our receiver and serial RX is already ticked. So that's all good as well. We can leave that as is. Onto the configuration tab. We've got one shot to 125 enabled and motor stop and disarm motors enabled as well, which is fine. The receiver is already set to serial based receiver and it's already set to SBOS, but do verify your settings just to be sure. That should be perfect for us and for what we'll be using this with. Let's have a look at the PIDs. 
They're all quite low, quite conservative. We may adjust those a little bit later. And if we go to the receiver tab and wiggle the sticks on our Tyrannis, move my pitch, it's actually controlling the throttle. So what we're gonna do is change the channel map to Tyrannis, which is T-A-E-R. Hit save. So we've got throttle correct, we've got pitch, we've got yaw and roll as well. So they're all now working perfectly. Um, always use the small diagram down here just to check that everything's going the right way as well to see if you have to reverse any of your channels. Next we'll have a look at the modes tab. Now obviously everybody has different preferences for which switches on their transmitter to use but I'm going to show you which I use. To facilitate this we also need to make a slight change on the transmitter as well and that is to ensure that it's transmitting the two channels that we're going to use for these switches. To do that we're going to go to the mixers page of our model. And once we're on that tab, we're then going to set up channels 5 to work on the switches for our mode. And I'm then going to go and configure channel 6 for my arm and disarm switch. There we go. Having done that, if I now toggle those switches and look at clean flight, I can see that aux 2 is now responding as is aux 1. So that's perfect. So I can now toggle back to the modes tab and I can set aux 2 for my arming and you'll see that that now moves, which is good. And I can configure aux 1 for my mode switch. So I'm going to start with angle mode there, then horizon mode, and of course rate mode. The other thing I'm going to configure is air mode. So I'm going to add air mode. I'm going to only enable that when I'm in horizon and rate mode actually. So Set it from there up to there, and that should work. So, okay, now we've got arm disarm, we have angle mode, horizon mode with air mode, and then also rate mode with air mode. So that's pretty much all that we need to configure for now. We're gonna unplug it from clean flight, and the important thing to do now is to test those settings without the props on. So first of all, arm, and give it some throttle, and the motor start. Low battery. And then we'll switch to uh, rate mode and we should have air mode kick in. Low battery. There we go. And the only other thing we're going to test is the fail safe. So if I arm it and put the throttle up and then turn off the transmitter. And there you go. So it's been set in beta flight to drop, which means that if it loses connection with the transmitter, the motors will all stop. So that's the safest way to configure it. So that all looks absolutely fine. We're going to now turn off the quad and fit the props and give it a very quick test. So that's the end of part one. In part two, we're going to be flight testing the Q90. If there's anything specific you'd like to see in that flight test, comment below. I'm about to get soaked. It's just started to rain. So be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. See you in part two. <clears throat>